Hi, I'm Charles. In today's video, we will do an unboxing of a Brutemann conical fermenter. We'll see what's inside the box, we'll assemble it, and then we'll see how it looks in my kitchen. Okay, here it is. It's the uh, Brew Demon two gallon fermenting system. Uh, this one particular one came in clear. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and get this puppy open so we can have to take a look inside. Okay, uh, basically when you open the box, this is pretty much what you're looking at. You have your fermenting vessel with lid. Inside the vessel, you'll have like your earlocks and lid liner and your instructions. And while I've got this in my hand, I should note that uh, this thing has got a, thick, a more thicker gauge of plastic that I thought it would have. It's got, it's got some firmness to it. I mean, it does have some give. You can push it in, but it takes a little bit of effort to push it in just a little bit. So yeah, this looks like it might be fairly durable. Let's put that aside. And this is what remains in the box. I'm just gonna get those later. I'm gonna open these up one at a time. And inside the first one, you have what appears to be your lid liner I'll go in there. You've got an airlock. You can never have enough airlocks. These things are these things are great. <laughs> You've got it looks like a small bung for your airlock that will fit in there, and then ultimately when we assemble it, that will fit in there. Not doing it now. And you have your vent. Now your vent can be used instead of the airlock. Basically, that would just simply cover up the hole and that would allow CO2 to escape. Uh, myself, I'm a big proponent of the airlocks because it lets you see <laughs> what your, what your uh, fermenter is doing in terms of releasing CO2 gas. It's, if nothing else, it's, I won't say it's a candle watching grass grow, but at least it lets you know that your stuff is, your stuff is cooking. Uh, what do we have here? We have, uh, in case I have to return it. <laughs> See, the instructions are pretty straightforward. I mean, all you need to do is just put it together in a matter of minutes, really. Uh, there are two sides to the instructions. The only difference being is that one is for the airlock and one is for the, uh, is for the vent. Other than that, they're the same on both sides. See, also, we have part of the stand, and ultimately, when we get this together in a few minutes, the fermenting vessel will just fit right inside the stand. Put that aside. There's a second bag, and final bag, and in here, I'll set this aside, and I'll set this aside, and I'm not going to lose that or that. We have part of your part of the legs for your stand. You've got uh, two. You've got three plugs for the bottom of your for the bottom of your legs, so that it just pop right inside there, keep it from sliding around too much. You've got your spigot. This particular one comes in in black, which is fine. Uh, seems uh, seems sturdy enough. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have any issues with it. Hopefully, put that aside. You have a temperature gauge. Now, this is really going to come in handy 
at some point, especially when I started make, uh, brewing beer, is that you can now keep an accurate idea of what the temperature reading is of what's going on inside uh, inside your vessel. And put that aside. And that, folks, is all that you're going to find in the basic kit, which is basically all that you need. Uh, we're going to move this over to another table where I've got a little bit better light. And, and I'll go ahead and uh, start assembly. Okay. <laughs> We've now got our parts spread out across the table. Uh, before I begin, the only, uh, the only thing that's written really in bold and underlined on the instructions is just one item. It says, do not over tighten nut. Basically, they're referring to this nut here. <laughs> Uh, I guess, uh, and this was part of some of the reviews that I read about this particular unit for some of the earlier ones, where people had a tendency when they're inserting the, uh, the nut into the hole, or rather inserting the spigot into the hole, is that they'll just tighten it, they'll tighten it, they'll tighten it, and finger tight is all that's really required. You, you don't need pliers, or you don't need to really tighten that bad boy in there. You want it finger tight, and then a little bit more. You don't really want to uh, uh, really bear down in it. That's according to the instructions. Now, if I start getting a leak, <laughs> then I'm probably gonna want to tighten this bad boy up a little bit more. But I think I should be okay. Oh, they didn't specify this. Yeah, it looks like they've got a little, a little rubber grommet or a little washer that's installed, uh, that's already installed for you. So that, that kind of makes it easier. But uh, let's get started. I guess the first thing I'm going to start is probably going to be with this bigot. All right. Find a little hole. Never really been a problem finding a hole. <clears throat> or at least that's not a problem I've, I've ever really had. Maybe when I was first starting out, but when you got older, then you kind of figured out where the hole was located at. So you go ahead and tighten that nut. Okay. Get it kind of lined up a little bit. And go ahead and tighten it, tighten it, tighten it. Finger tight. And then some. So that bad boy's in there pretty tight. That's not going nowhere. All right. That wasn't so hard. Uh, the next thing I want to do is get this, the base together. Let's see. Okay. Uh, yeah, you got to work at it a little bit. It's going to take a little bit of force. These puppies aren't coming out, that's for sure. That's two. All right. That's that. Finding that hole again. I mean, it's friction fit. I mean, it's basically, I mean, they're, they're not going to fall out. But they're easy to remove in case you have to disassemble it for any particular reason. All right. It's all level. It's all stable. Okay. And then we have our vessel. That will go in. Not like that. That's for sure. Let's turn this a little bit. So it's... uh. Gives us room to put it in there. All right. What I'm finding out is that you just can't drop it in. You've got to, you got to kind of, got to kind of angle this bad boy in so that the spigot clears first. 
and then you just angle it through, angle it around. And that's that. I mean, once it's inside, it, it, it's a it's a good fit. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's not an overly snug fit, but it's, it's it's not gonna fall out on its own. At least it's not gonna fall out on its own unless you tip it over. So that's a little, little advice for you there. So you're moving it around, you're on a hard floor, and you decided, well, it's okay, I'll just grab it by the leg, just move it to wherever. That's not gonna work, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you're gonna find that out real quick. So, but otherwise, it's in there. Uh, it's not really gonna tip over, even though it's a, it's a three-leg system. It seems, it seems fairly stable. It's all right. One thing you couldn't really see on the clear ones is that there is a, a measuring scale which lets you know how many gallons of, uh, of juice or wort that you've got in there. Wort? Wort? Wort. That you've got in there. Uh, the thing I like about the, this is, now I should point out that when you're shopping for a conical system or a conical fermenter, you'll notice that uh, most of the fermenters that you'll see will have your, still your same basic conical shape, conical shape. And usually at the base of it, you'll see uh, uh, another little collector or a ball. And basically what that's designed to do is to collect your, uh, your dead yeast and your wort work, work, so that uh, you don't have to uh, rack your, your, your wine or, or your beer in order to uh, get it off of, that, uh, off of that stuff because you don't want it to uh, um, mess up your beer or your wine. Uh, I decided that I'm going to be making more wine than beer and uh, uh, having the uh, dead geese collect down towards the bottom or below the spigot it will mean that I will still have to rack my wine. Uh, having a little spigot here kind of makes it a whole lot easy because I don't have to uh, use a racking cane or I don't have to just uh, just simply uh, use the hose alone and, and, and siphon it that way. This is going to make at least that portion of it a whole lot easier. That is kind of a it's kind of a lifesaver. Uh, I'm going to do another video. Uh, 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 at some point, uh, showing you uh, the progression between uh, just simply sucking on the hose versus using a racking cane. Uh, uh, at some point in my winemaking journey, I'll probably end up getting a pump. Uh, no time soon because, again, this is making wine on a shoestring budget. Okay, I don't have a lot of money, not going to spend a lot of money. Uh, it is just a hobby. Uh, one that I just recently started. So yeah, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of money, but this is nice. For me, this is this is just what I need. It's just the right amount of wine, three gallons, two and a half gallons, and uh, somewhere in that range. Um, I still have my uh, my other uh, uh, my other carboys, which are one gallon carboys. And uh, I even have a batch that I'm making, a one gallon batch of, of uh, uh, apple wine that I'm making in the uh, original container that I bought at the store. Okay, you can do that. That's going to be another video in terms of how to make wine. Uh, but for the most part, the fermenter, getting back, getting back to business here. Uh, make sure that the, uh, make sure that the liner is in there because that is going to help. Sorry about that. What do you mean my, my, my SD card is full? Are you kidding? <laughs> All right, my camera just basically decided uh, shooting an HD video was a little memory intensive, so it decided to uh, help me out by stopping my video in the middle of my word and uh, and uh, forcing me to restart using uh, internal storage. Uh, now that I know that something like that might happen, I'll probably end up getting another video uh, uh, SD card so that I won't have to deal with that again. Uh, as I was saying, uh, cap screws on. Uh, uh, again, for those of you who simply want to use the uh, the vent plug, I'm not going to push this in all the way because I'm taking this out. Uh, for the most part, this is what your unit is going to look like. 
uh, for me. Uh, this is going to end up in my kitchen, and uh, I'm going to cut to uh, basically showing you where uh, this is going to go. Uh, and more than likely, if I've got enough clearance under my counter, because this is 16 inches tall, if I've got enough clearance under my counter, I'll probably keep it with the uh, with the airlock in, simply because I'm you know just an airlock kind of guy. Uh, if not, then the airlock will come out, uh, the vent cap will go in, and you know what, that'll be fine. If I wanted to see an airlock in operation, I mean, I've got three other gallons or three other airlocks that are currently, you know, bubbling away. And apple wine is just about done now. That are still bubbling, bubbling, uh, that I could use. And if I need to get my fix of seeing this bubble up, you know, I'm bored for whatever reason, I just want to watch it, well then, that'll be that. But again, there you go. A similar version of the uh, three gallon uh, Brewmaster conical fermenter. Can't wait to get started. Okay, now we're in the kitchen. Uh, this will probably be the place I'm going to have my uh, brew demon conical fermenter. Uh, it will fit on the counter underneath the cabinets, I found. Uh, you've got a good uh, ooh, three inches of clearance, so you can just leave it there, put in your brew, go ahead and brew it, and uh, it'll be a nice conversational piece for those that come by and want to check you out. What I did learn, however, is that if I want to use my airlock, take, it, take out the, uh, when you insert the airlock, You'll find out that it no longer fits under the cabinet. Okay, so I guess I guess that's that. I mean, if I really wanted to see it in there, I mean, I could just I just I could, I could just leave it outside the cabinet, kind of sorta, you know, doubtful. But uh, I've got enough air locks in my other uh, one gallon fermenters uh, that uh, if I wanted to see this thing bubbling away, I can go look at those. Okay, if I just want to see what this one looks like from time to time, I can just slide it out. Plug it in. Oh, okay. Take it out, put it in, slide it back. Doubt that I'll do that. I might do it anyway just to do it, but that's not something that I'm really planning on doing. But as you can see, it does fit rather snugly. Uh, this is a small kitchen, okay? Counter space, a little bit over there, is at a kind of a premium. Had to move a few things around. Some things are now under the cabinet. Uh, but again, it doesn't really take up a lot of space. I mean, about a square foot, and that's that. Uh, so for those of you who have small kitchens where everything is pretty much within arm's reach, <laughs> okay, uh, you can still have this unit, and it's not going to be that much of an inconvenience. You still have enough space to work around it. I mean, it's not, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a space hog. It's not, a, it's not a counter hog. So you're good. But with that, uh, this is my new. Uh, Brew Demon 3-gallon uh, conical fermenter. I uh, can't wait to use it. Uh, we'll see that happening in a later video. If you like this video and you would like to see more of them, please, please click on the subscribe button and I'll try and put one out every week.